what kind of leadership is needed to handle these, all of these challenges that we talked about. Because what I've said so far is that we have a major leadership issue. This is the health issue from the, from the surface, but inside it's a leadership issue and it has exposed all our weaknesses and vulnerabilities. And we talk about these different level of challenges, including the personal one. Now, what kind of leadership traits, right? What kind of leadership characteristics should you and I have so that we can handle all of this? Of course, this depends on the context that we talk about because what you need to mobilize yourself is different than what you need to mobilize individuals. It's different than what you need to mobilize organizations or nations or the international community. But there are common traits that I would like to talk about in the end, at the end of this, of this uh, webinar. First one, I want to talk about the very important fundamental trait of leadership is courage. Without courage, don't even bother talk about leadership. Because leadership is about dealing with the difficult realities. So how can you even think about exercising leadership and deal with all the challenges, the mega challenges that I have been elaborating upon, if you don't have courage? How can you have, where can you get the power, the strength to make bold decisions without courage? So definitely you have to have courage to deal with shaping the future reality that you want to live in. The second one is truth. How can you deal with reality if you can't name things the way they are? I cannot, I cannot stress more the importance of truth. If you don't make truth a fundamental element of the way you exercise leadership, my friends, then you're living in an illusion and you're making everybody else also live in an illusion. Right? So how can you make truth as an important part of your uh, leadership philosophy from leadership practice? Number three is dealing with core causes. And here comes to framing the issue. In the science of leadership, it's very important to frame the issues properly. Because if you don't frame the issues properly, then you haven't diagnosed the problem properly. Then you're dealing with the wrong problem. You are, when you get the diagnosis wrong, then everything that comes after that is built on something that's wrong. So it further complicates the problem. So how can you deal with the core issues by framing them in the right way? That's why truth and courage are super important. Another aspect is taking responsibility because responsibility is at the core of what leadership is about. Is to say that although this is not my fault, I have nothing to do with this, right? This is not, I'm not accountable for this, but I take it on as my personal responsibility to do something that I can do to mobilize in the direction of making things better. The, another point, leadership is about turning chaos into order. It's about creating new processes to do that. Now you've seen, we were in a certain stage of equilibrium before this started. We were in such a state of balance. We suddenly moved into a state of disequilibrium. So the question is, how do you bring back order into this? And for that, you need to create new processes that can adapt to the new reality. How can you think inclusively, right? Leadership now, it will require an inclusive perspective because we've discovered how interdependent and how connected we are. Without an inclusive mindset in terms of you know, in, um, taking into effect and listening to all people around you, especially people who are part of your circle where you want to exercise leadership, how can you be effective in doing that? What can, now, um, now, what about um, um, petty politics and, 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 and petty matters? I tell you now. As you will see now, in, if you look at the global perspective, uh, if you look at, look at what's happening, what's going to happen in your country at a you know, local level, you will start seeing after this is over, political parties you know, and oppositions and government and authority, all of these starting, as I said before, trying to exchange blame so that they can score against each other. You don't have time for petty matters and for silly politics. It will drain, drain your energy. You need to put all your energy on how you adapt so that you can move forward. Another point is collaborative thinking. As you saw, government took an authoritarian style right, in exercising their leadership and in exercising their role to, to, to handle a crisis. And that's the right thing to do. But you can't continue this for a long time. 
From now on, after we finish this crisis, you have to move into a collaborative state of thinking. You have to move into a collaborative style of leadership because the, the crisis is over. So you have to sit with others and talk to them. And to do that, you have to be flexible. You can't be stubborn and exercise leadership in a dynamic situation. You have to test assumptions, assumptions of the past, where my interpretation, assumptions about the past, were they correct, were they accurate, where my, are my assumptions about the present also accurate, are my assumptions about the future also accurate, because wrong assumptions, wrong interpretations, wrong diagnosis, then wrong actions, and then problems became become worse. So we have to consider all of these assumptions. I'll just give you a small example. You know, most of the world went into the strategy of mitigation you know, when it comes to controlling the coronavirus effect. Sweden chose another model. They went into the term that is called, quote-unquote, herd uh, approach, the um, herd immunity, where they just allow people to interact and the virus to flow naturally until the community develops its own immune system. Now, and it was controversial, so we have to, you know, reconsider this approach. And how can you do that if you don't have a flexible mindset that can look at these different perspectives and ask yourself which one makes sense, which assumption proves to be better than others. Another point is, is to, um, to, 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 to emphasize that you cannot go into the future when there's so much movement around you, so many, so much volatility with big ego. Ego kills. And you have to acknowledge that you don't know all the answers. You don't know. No matter how genius you are, your IQ is 170, 120, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Nobody can predict this. So you have to put your ego aside and acknowledge that you don't have all the answers. You have to have the courage to improvise as much as you can. Because we're going into unknown territory, so nobody can tell you from past experience, I know what to do. You don't know what to do because nobody has past experience to compare to what happened. So you have to improvise and experiment, you know, small things that if succeeded, then you can scale them up. If they didn't succeed, the cost is low, you move to experimenting something else. And that takes courage because there will be cost involved. You need to connect with people. You need to connect with people because how you mobilize, how can you mobilize people if you don't connect with them properly? You need to encourage diversity of thoughts, diversity of approach, so that you make sure that you're not missing any point and you are incorporating and building and integrate, integrating into your thinking the experience of everybody around you because we were all in this together and you need to be a great, 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 great listener. Of course, you need to have to, 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 have to know how to mobilize, you need to have the techniques of mobilization, and that's an art by itself. And you need to know how to build trust with the people around you, whether they were your team, whether they are your clients, whether they are your constituencies, whether it's the market. Trust is essential to build these connections and to move forward. And you need to understand that it's going to be a messy. It's not going to be a clean, you know, hygiene operation. It's going to be super messy because when you do experimentation, when you do improvisation, there will be failure, and that failure will create mess. So we will go through a messy stage until we go back to a stage of equilibrium and stability. Think about the hurricane. After the hurricane, it's completely messy, so we need to clean up and start all over again and learn how to, you know, how to apply new thinking and build a stronger foundation for, you know, for the next hurricane. The last three points I want to mention is encouragement because people need to be encouraged. People are tired, traumatized, uh, lost, um, scared. Uh, they don't know what to do. Uh, they're looking for signals. So you need to encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. Even when you don't know the answer, encourage them and make sure that they are partners with you in finding the answers and the solution. You need to observe and act. Then observe again. Then, based on that observation, make corrections. Then act again. Then observe. So you need to oscillate and alternate between a state of observation into a state of intervention. Then a state of another observation and interpretation. Right? Then you do corrections. Then you make another interpretation. And then you go. The cycle continues until you get it right. And, and the last point and the most important point is you have to have faith and hope that you and people around you 
will get over this. Whatever is the damage, depression, recession, you name it. Listen, we have the technology. We have the intellectual resources. We have people who are ready to work. We have the expertise. We have the willingness to go back to work. We have the energy to go back to, you know, reconstructing life. So, in my mind, all the components of going back to life as it used to be, and even better, are there. And I'm reminded by these beautiful pictures and videos that I see sometimes on how animals are going back to cities. I'm sure you've seen them on social media, how tigers, birds, animals, deers are going back, you know, they're coming out of their forest and going back to cities in no times, in just, you know, they've been away for years and years and maybe decades. It took them just two or three weeks to go back um, and expand their, 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 their horizon and expand their scope of living and expand their territories and go back to cities. So that shows about the, 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 the amazing um, quality of resilience that all of us have. So that's going to be a major impor important component in you and I spreading hope around us, spreading hope based on the face that we are, uh, we are strong, that we've made it so far and that we can learn and that we have by default the ability to learn and to adapt, right? And to, and to want more and to seek more and to, by default, we have the ability to, to grow and to heal and to forget. So all of these components give us hope that we have everything it takes, everything it takes to exercise beautiful and brilliant leadership so that not only we can get our life back, but we can build a much, 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 much better reality. And this is the core of leadership.